Hey guys, on this channel, I give my opinion on many different things, but I feel like one of my opinions was not as nearly well received as some of my other ones. The one I'm talking about is obviously my why I don't like the new Hannah Kimura video. It is my most viewed video on my channel after the strike purge. It is also my fourth most liked video, but it's also my number one most disliked video. Luckily, the like to dislike ratio is pretty good, so it doesn't really bother me that much. It makes sense that that video would have a lot of dislikes. Anytime you say something negative about a singular wrestler, it makes sense that their hardcore fans would feel that it's almost a personal attack against them. When we pick favorites, anytime that favorite is criticized, it can it can kind of hurt when someone says something bad about them. As you know, I love reading the comments on my videos. And as you might have noticed, on that video, I have gotten some of the most saltiest comments I have ever seen on my channel. So instead of giving actual constructive criticism or telling me why they think I'm wrong, they rely on insults and personal attacks. Honestly, it's hilarious. For those who don't know, in my opinion, once you have to rely on a personal attack or an insult in any kind of debate or argument, you've automatically lost. You are a loser. If you cannot back up what you say, then don't say it. With that said, I made that video to share some grievances I had with Hannah after her comeback from her Mexican world tour. It's clear that I wasn't the only one who held this opinion, as a lot of you guys agree with me in the comments, and I've also read online from different people that they felt the same way. And it's obvious that we were on the right side since even Hannah herself has started changing. Now, I cannot say reliably why she decided to change, but I think the people's backlash had something to do with it. The reason why I decided to redig up the topic of Hannah Kimura and her change is because she is not like she used to be back when I made that video. And I still, to this day, get comments from people saying on that video things like, I can't believe Hannah's like this now, and things like that. And that's when it hit me that a lot of my viewers probably don't regularly follow Joshi and or Stardom and rely on my videos to kind of get them up to date. And with that video being out, it's outdated now. Uh, it is no longer true. So I feel like leaving that up without doing some kind of follow-up is kind of the same as spreading misinformation. So I would like to make this video to update you guys and anybody who just happens to come across my channel on what Hannah is like now because she's actually very entertaining. So let's get to it. First thing I want to talk about that I brought up in the first video was her no-selling. Hannah is not a monster. There is no reason she should be no-selling almost everything. One of my biggest complaints against her in my original video was that she no-sold everything. It wasn't just most moves. It was pretty much every single move she was no-selling. It got really bad to the point where it was extremely boring to watch. I mean... It is not fun to see someone else busting their butt to put on a good match and only one of the person looking disinterested. It, it makes them look stupid. Thankfully, Hannah has completely revamped her thought process on this because she is not only selling again, she is selling exceptionally. Uh, if you want a good example of what she's like now, watch her match against Konami, a singles match against Konami, on the February 9th of this year. It is phenomenal. I even added it to my potential match of the year candidates. Uh, actually, both Hannah singles matches from those two shows that happened back to back made that list to me. They were that good. She is an exceptional seller when she wants to, and I am so glad she decided to get back to it. Now, the reason why I'm taking so long to make this video is because there was a small period around the time that she changed her character, that she actually started getting better. But then she regressed back to the way she used to be, almost like even worse, and then was that way for a while again. So I wanted to give her a lot of time to reprove 
that she is going to be an entertaining wrestler again. After the Konami match, it was so good that I decided I didn't have to wait anymore because for someone to do that kind of match, they have to be back on the right track. While I was writing the script, I had not seen the Hannah vs. Starlight Kid singles match yet. At the time of recording this, I have, and it is absolutely killer. Like I said, it made my match of the year contender list. I'm completely back on her side, um, supporting her and looking forward to her matches again. She has become one of the more entertaining parts of stardom, again, like she used to be. And one of the major changes she did, in my opinion, that helped that was the selling. With her change that she did, she's not only selling, she's showing that her opponent is hurting her. Which, ironically, makes her look even tougher than no selling. Because someone who just acts like they're taking no damage, yeah, I guess that can be considered tough. But someone who seems to be getting their butt kicked, but comes back and bounces back and fights through it, to me that makes them look stronger. Perfect example was the Momo versus Jamie Hayter uh, singles match for the Wonder of Stardom title that they had recently. Jamie murdered Momo throughout the entire match, but Momo was able to bounce back and take the win. and made her look absolutely insane, monsterish, to be able to take all that punishment and still push through to win. And that is what Hannah's like now. She is now able to get us on her side. I applaud Hannah for being able to see her shortcomings and the wrong sides of her change and deciding to change it. In this day and age, apologizing or admitting that you're wrong can really be seen as a sign of weakness and people can dogpile on you. So they were dogpiling on you beforehand and now they're dogpiling you on the after because you backtracked. I think that is so ridiculous. I think when someone is trying to right a wrong, they should be allowed to. There is no reason to crucify someone for something they did when they're trying to write it. Now, this doesn't apply to everything, so don't take this as like a political statement or something like that. I'm specifically talking about like wrestling and things like that. She tried something new. Very few people liked it. I know some people liked it. I'm not going to say no one liked it because a lot of people did like it. But I feel like there was a lot more people on the other side who hated it. Either she saw that and decided to change or she came to that realization herself because something happened, she flipped her switch, she became an entertaining wrestler again and I applaud you for that Hannah. Next thing I want to talk about is her personality or her character essentially. I believe, I don't really know my original video too well, I don't really like watching my videos um, because I cringe too hard, but in my original video I do believe I touched up on the fact that she was more of a serious, um, non-goofy type of Hannah. And I never really had a problem with that. I wasn't, it's not something that I would have chosen, but I didn't really have a problem with it. I liked the storyline that they were trying to go with. I just thought the execution was terrible. So with this new Hannah, she's actually found a way to kind of combine her old self with her new self. She is finding a perfect combination of goofy and aggressiveness. It's really refreshing to see. I do like this Hannah a lot more because I feel like one of her biggest strengths is her charisma. And I'm not talking about her looks here. Just her way of captivating people with her words and actions. It is a lot like Samire in a way that for both of them, their wrestling doesn't matter because they're so good at drawing you in with the other aspects of wrestling. Now, don't take that as a shot at Hannah's wrestling. She's actually very talented. I completely did a 180 on her. I thought she was just okay. But after her match with Konami, I think she's a phenomenal wrestler now. I just mean that she is so good at that charisma stuff that for her to try to do this broody, not caring about anything attitude, it is a real disservice to her talents. Like I said before, the change to her personality wasn't needed, but it is very appreciated. Last thing I want to talk about is her outfit, because in the original one, I kind of harped on her a lot about that, and even some people in the comments seem to completely miss my entire point Yes, I don't think it's a good outfit, but only because it's not good for wrestling. I think it looks dumb, sure, but a dumb outfit doesn't mean anything. Like, 
whatever, you know? What's important is the wrestling. I still don't think her outfit looks good. The only reason why Hannah can pull it off is because Hannah is ridiculously hot. Like, insanely hot. Like, way high levels of hot. She could pretty much pull off whatever she wanted. And I've always been kind of a, a fan of, like, a the cyber goth thing. The only part of her outfit I actually really, really hate is the the leg poofies. They're they're just stupid. They're they're dumb. They're just, uh, get rid of them, please. It's just a bad outfit for wrestling. There's just so many things that she just needs to constantly be fiddling with. It's gotten a lot better. Apparently, she started taping her leg fuzzy things, and um, one of her two outfit types, the arm things are actually strapped to her um, shirt. So I believe that fixes that problem. But even if it didn't, it wouldn't really be a problem anymore. And I know that doesn't make any sense, but let me explain. The reason why I focused so much on it before was because I was so bored of her wrestling. It was god-awful boring. In my original video, I did a montage of all the time she... Uh, had to fix her outfit in three matches. Um, and I even skipped tons of them in the first one because I was being too lenient. And then the last one, I missed a bunch because I was so bored of watching her matches that I, I couldn't focus on the screen anymore that I had to find entertainment elsewhere. My mind and eyes drifted and I started noticing everything else. I think I noticed more about the people outside the ring during her matches during that period of time than I did in the ring. So... When I was trying to find something to entertain myself in those matches, I would notice, oh, she's fixing her legs, she's fixing her arms, she's fixing her thing. And it was even more of a spotlight on it because she was no-selling. So in the times when she was supposed to be selling, she was actually fixing her outfit. So everything was just against her. To make all of that short, it doesn't matter if she needs to fiddle with her outfit anymore because she's entertaining the watch as a wrestler again. I would rather have her have an outfit that she doesn't need to fiddle with as nearly as much. But, like I said, she still looks good in it. But that's Hannah. She can come out in a cow suit and she's still freaking kill it. So. so, in conclusion, I think Hannah is a very good example in the wrestling world that nothing is ever too far gone. She went from, and this is just my personal opinion... She went from being so bad that I wish she would actively leave the promotion of stardom and never come back to me highly anticipating her upcoming matches. This is a good lesson for people, not just in wrestling, but in life in general. Don't let your ego get in the way of progress. If there is something that can be improved, improve it. Don't double down. Like I said, I don't know Hannah personally. I don't know anybody from that thing. That I, I have pretty much zero contact with anybody from the Stardom promotion or anybody to do with it. A um, couple of the wrestlers have liked some of my tweets, but that's I, I think they just like everyone's tweets. So um, I don't know what was the catalyst for her change in her state of mind on this whole gimmick, but I want to give her the benefit of the doubt. And say that she was listening to the fans. Because at the end of the day, the fans are the ones that are going to want to go to see you. Why would you want to do something that's going to make them turn away from you? And I think Hannah is smart enough to realize that. Final words to Hannah directly. I know she'll never watch this, but keep up the good work. Uh, you could be a legend one day. I mean, you're already on your way. You are the total package. And I would hate... To see you waste your potential by trying to force something that's not working. Bye.